Hi guys, hope you're doing well and I've had a fantastic start to 2023. So this is the second part of my Busy Man training series and in this particular video I'm going to be taking a look at a two day training approach based very loosely on Mike Mentz's consolidation routine. Now I was doing Mad Cow which is a three day a week full body routine before. Fantastic routine that I really strongly recommend. I've used it in the past to great success as of many of the clients that have completed the program under my guidance. For me right now, I just found it was a little bit monotonous. I wasn't really enjoying it that much because of the frequency of certain lifts, bench press, bent row, squat. You've really got to be enjoying those lifts to complete a program like Mad Cow because you'll be doing them two or even three times each week. So I fancied the change, um, came up with a plan, as I said, based very loosely on uh, Mike Mentor's two day a week routine, the consolidation routine. In fact, even later on in his career, he proposed even lower frequency, which I think I don't tend to agree with, and I don't tend to agree with the uh, amount of exercises that you would typically prescribe. So the consolidation routine is typically your uh, deadlift, uh, dips, close grip pull down, and squat. Um, so there's no direct arm work, and there's no direct calf work, and not really any kind of hamstring work. You could switch up the deadlift to a stiff leg deadlift or an RDL, and that would sort that problem out. But I wouldn't feel comfortable just doing those four exercises. Now, I'm not ruling it out. I, I would quite like to try it as an experiment. Um, but I think for most people, most normal people with average genetics, the results will be limited. So I've added a few more exercises in. The same approach will be used. It's high intensity training, so it means to failure or beyond. Very hard sessions, um, but with just a little bit more variety um, each workout as opposed to just the four exercises. And that's something I will like to try actually in the future. I really would like to commit myself to that routine and see what happens. But for the time being, I'm going to settle with this. I'm going to run through each session. So it's day one. Typically, I would have uh, the first session on maybe a Monday. Then I would do the second session on the Thursday. For me personally, it's more of a rolling kind of uh, routine because it's based around my work shifts. Um, but for a normal person on like a Monday to Friday work schedule, I would perhaps do the sessions on a Monday and a Thursday. So you've got um, two days rest in between day one and day two, and then three days rest in between day two and then day one again. Um, so yeah, plenty of rest needed for sessions like this. But the way I see it, training frequency is very important and it enables you to do more per week, but it's not necessarily the be all and end all. If you think logically about it, the Results you're going to see in terms of physique development from zero sessions a week to one good session a week is going to be phenomenal. Nothing will match that. Every session that you do thereafter that is going to be very minimal in terms of the potential gains that you could see over that one session. It's never going to compare to the difference between zero and one session. And sometimes, even with high frequencies, you can actually detract from your ability to build muscle and act as a hindrance depending on how well you schedule those sessions and what you do within those sessions, it's definitely um, something that can benefit you, but if used incorrectly, too much work um, can give you the, the opposite effect of what you're actually trying to do in the gym. So we'll start with session one, really, really simple. Every muscle is covered during each session um, and really quite enjoyable. You can replace some of these exercises. I might give you some choices as to movements that you can kind of switch over to you haven't got that piece of equipment um, but right now for me these exercises are all very fun and I enjoy them immensely the advanced techniques I use predominantly are going to be rest pause maybe some drop sets later on and pre-exhaustion on uh, two of the exercises in this session the first session it'll be quad extensions straight into the pendulum squat which is again a quad dominant leg movement so we'll get started straight into the first session, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think of the routine. This is perfect for those of you that have got a busy work schedule, maybe got family life, that want to see results in the gym, want to see a better physique, but don't necessarily want to make that trip to the gym each day or certainly you know five times a week. Because um, for me, it takes a, a fair amount of time to drive to the gym. And when I'm not working, I'm not... Um, on shift i don't particularly want to spend hours going to the gym and training to be honest i just want to get in and get out and get the results um, so give this workout a go let me know what you think let me know in the comment section if you enjoy the video and uh, we'll just get started straight into the first session guys so 
So with a routine like this, I'm really approaching it from a minimalist viewpoint, finding out the least amount of work that I can do that will still enable me to move closer towards the physique goals that I have. How can I reduce the time spent in the gym, but still see muscular development progress? That's the holy grail of HIT. I'm not concerned with adding in more sets just in case. I'm trying to condense the amount of work that I'm doing, um, but still see progress. Now, for whatever reason, there may be times where you'll be unable to get to the gym as frequently as you would like or spend as much time in the gym per session, be it social commitments, work commitments, or burnout from a previous high volume approach. And this is where a routine like this comes in very handy. If more people were aware of this training approach or training style, then less people would quit the gym. All too often I see people get frustrated with the fact that they can't adhere to a five or six day approach and they end up quitting completely when all they would need to do would be to maybe amalgamate sessions or condense them somehow, uh, reduce the frequency, reduce the number of sets that they do and still be able to see progress. Training consistency is absolutely vital. It's the most important variable. This is a momentum based endeavor. Whether you're doing five or six days a week, or one or two days a week, the most important thing is to keep training. So programs like this are a godsend. You can switch to something like this when you can't or don't want to be in the gym um, for hours at a time. And you'll still see brilliant progress. Let's say for the sake of the argument, more sets are better than less sets. You'll see slightly more progress from three sets compared to one set. And I think for most people, that's actually not the case for most normal people um, that are, are, you know, put on a program like this. They're going to see brilliant results. But let's assume more sets are better, but you're seeing 90 to 95% of potential muscle growth from one set and the remainder being from sets two and three. So the vast majority of your muscle mass that you're going to gain is going to come from that one well-executed, intense set. But those second and third sets for every exercise add on an hour to your workout, you know, four or five hours a week. Is it worth it if you're only going to see such a small percentage of improvements over that first set? Potentially, if you're looking to achieve the absolute best, absolute maximal muscle growth possible but for most people normal people work normal jobs it's not going to the case you're not going to notice it so this is why it becomes very frustrating for me when I, I see people quit I see people give up in the gym when all you've got to do is you know change those training variables and, and use a style like this so if you're looking to decrease the amount of time in the gym then you have to increase the intensity of the workout you can't have both. You can't, you can't see the same result by doing less in the gym and working less hard. It's not going to cut it. So, for example, GVT, gym and volume training, 10 sets of 10. You might start off the first set with a weight that you could do for perhaps 15 to 17 reps. So it feels fairly light, but by the end, you know, set 7, 8, 9 and 10 is getting pretty damn difficult and you're struggling to reach those 10 reps because you're doing so much workload with that weight, you know, 100 reps by the end of the workout. Approaching high intensity training with that same mindset or that same intensity is not going to cut it. You have to make sure that set is to failure or if not past failure using advanced techniques. Uh, it's going to make your workout a lot more worthwhile and you'll see more progress in less time. So I'm going to show you a few tricks here that you can use to make those workouts more effective uh, with less time and without a training partner. If you've got a training partner, even better because you can add in forced reps on most exercises. Um, so when you're on your own, the training techniques that you can use to increase the intensity of the session are gonna be predominantly uh, rest pause, maybe some drop sets, but done in the right way. Uh, negatives, making sure you're controlling the negative, um, using looser form reps on certain exercises like cheat curls, um, changing the angle of um, uh, movement, uh, the, the setup which you're going to see on these dumbbell curls here. There are a few things that you can utilize 
um, to enable you to carry on that set past the point of failure. It's easier to do on some exercises than others. But the most important thing is you go in to these training sessions with a mindset of absolutely beasting it on that one set. So warm up sets per exercise are going to vary between one and four depending on the movement. I would say generally speaking it's going to be two to three warm ups on most exercises. Uh, making sure that you're physically and mentally prepared for the work at hand. Now on these dumbbell curls, a dumbbell incline curl, which is one of my favorite bicep movements, I'm utilizing rest pause. So I continue the set until I reach failure, or I believe that the next rep I will fail. And obviously, as you become more experienced, this becomes more obvious and easy to determine. Um, and then I rest for about 10 seconds and complete as many reps as I can again, but I twist the dumbbells. This goes back to what I said before about changing the angles. A uh, fully supinate curl is a lot harder than a um, neutral grip to supinate curl. So when I feel like I'm struggling with supinate, I switch to a neutral grip and then twist as I come up, and that will enable me to maybe get a couple more reps out. Here on the bar pushdown, for example, I'm using a weighted belt to enable me to get better leverage so I can lift more weight. And I might be able to lift maybe five to 10% more by using this as opposed to just body weight because you, you're gonna reach a point where that tipping point where you haven't got enough leverage or purchase to be able to control that weight is just gonna lift your body weight up. And again, using rest pause to continue the set past failure. Um, doesn't need to be a huge amount of reps. so. In terms of rep ranges, what I'm looking to accomplish is really on that first set, if I'm using rest pause, between say five and 10 reps, something like that. And then for the first set of the rest pause thereafter, perhaps two to three. And then for the second rest pause, after another 10 seconds, maybe one or two. Um, and that gives me a few more reps than if I were to stop the set short at positive failure and that's what HIT training is about um, and it's really fun you know so far I'm really enjoying the workouts they're short they're about one hour or so maybe one hour 15 twice a week twice a week that's it and so far since starting I've seen progress with more or less every movement every session and you can't ask for more than that and I think sometimes it's easier to see progression easier to work on progressive overload with a limited number of exercises and a limited number of sets per exercise not only because you have less to focus on you can concentrate more on fewer movements but also because of energy you've got more energy going into the sets that matter if that first set is going to give you the vast majority of your potential muscle gain you've got more energy going into that to drive progressive overload so i think this is a very effective way of training uh, for most people will be very sufficient to see uh, brilliant results and you can definitely attain a, an amazing physique with an approach like this i'm not saying this is better than high volume training i'm just saying it's a viable approach um, for when your lifestyle uh, is more suited to uh, shorter or less frequent training sessions. So here I'm using the shoulder press machine, plate loaded, and it's quite a heavy set. I think I only managed five to seven reps or so. So I decided to actually drop the weight slightly before moving on to the rest pause because I was fearful that I wouldn't be able to get the first rep up. Because with this machine you have to break inertia, it's very, very difficult to get past that sticking point about midway. And if I'm only doing you know, five to seven reps on that first set, I may not manage that uh, first rest pause. So I reduced the weight by 10 kilos a side, which I think, well, the total weight per side was uh, 55. So you're looking at what, 20% uh, odd on each side, which is a good number. And I was able to get a decent amount of reps, but no higher than the first set that I did. And that's important. I don't believe in reducing the weight so much that you're gonna massively increase the reps you do on the second and third drop. Say for instance, you get seven reps on the first set and then like 13 and 17 reps on the on the subsequent sets. I think that's too light. You're not gonna be maximally stimulating your muscles for muscular growth. It's more about endurance at that point, surely. 
So what would be better would probably be like seven, five, and then six, for example, anywhere around there. So moving on to the back portion of the workout, I'm actually doing some pre-exhaustion here, which is a technique that I use for the quad extensions and pendulum squats in the first workout. Really great technique to increase the amount of muscular stimulus, increase the mind-to-muscle connection on a movement whilst using less weight. And I think sometimes that's important. It certainly feels a lot better. So I do the pullovers to failure, heavy still, for relatively low reps, straight into a pull down, I think for 11 reps or so. And by the end of the set, my lats are on fire. And I feel that burn a lot quicker on this set than if I weren't to do pre-exhaustion, obviously. Uh, but there's just something about it. It feels so good. Um, really, really good. And because you're using less weight, I don't feel it in my elbows as much, which have been a bit a bit uh, painful at times recently. So yeah, a great technique. And as I said, same with the quad extensions into a quad-based pendulum squat. So you're making it more difficult for the quads. Uh, and subsequently, you just feel it a lot more. You feel that burn. And I've done a video on this in the past. I believe it's a fantastic technique, even though you're using less weight than you would fresh. Really good for working around injuries. So, for example, you've got pec strain. Uh, you can do your you know, pec flies straight into your bench press. And your bench press feels a lot better. doesn't hurt anywhere near or feel uh, anywhere near as uncomfortable as it would on the shoulder otherwise. So, yeah, really good technique. So here I'm training arms. And it's very important to train arms with the same intensity as you would do with any other body part. There's no sense in slacking in the art department if you want big arms. You've got to train them hard, same as you would do chest or back. So the exercise of choice on the second session is overhead extensions, a brilliant exercise. I'm going fairly heavy using the uh, easy bar on this, which just tends to be a little bit more comfortable on the wrist. I don't like the straight bar on overhead extensions because it tends to hurt the outside of the wrist um, where the little finger is and on this I just do a straight set to failure I, I attempt uh, a, a rep where I fail and I leave it at that because um, it's going to be really really difficult to do rest pause and the drop set's going to take ages because I've got to you know, unscrew the weight so just leave as is now the last exercise here uh, recorded at least um, is the uh, easy bar curl last exercise for upper body anyway Brilliant exercise. Again, slightly more comfortable than the, super, uh, the, the fully supinated straight bar. I do prefer that bar, but this is just more comfortable because your wrists are angled in a more natural position. And I do as many strict reps as possible, and then I utilize momentum to increase the intensity of the set. Cheat reps, cheat curls especially, get a lot of hate, and it's completely unneeded and unnecessary. It's a viable technique to use to increase the intensity of the set. The muscular burn that you can get from carrying on a set using cheat curls is far, far, far greater than you're ever gonna get stopping the set when you reach failure with strict form. So something to bear in mind. Now, last exercise of the day, hamstring curls, seated hamstrings. This is a great machine, really, really nice. I prefer seated hamstring curls to laying hamstring curls unless uh, the machine is very, very good. Um, and a while back, uh, you may have seen me train in my friend's garage. His lying leg curl is brilliant and subsequently, you know, feels fantastic. Um, but usually it's a seated hamstring curl. Um, I think it's just easier to get a higher level of intensity on the hamstrings without the lower back kind of starting to ache. So again, with this, I'm using rest paws, as many reps as I can. Uh, I'm using a relaxed foot stance when I do these. And when I start struggling, I tend to pull my toes towards my body. I flex my toes hard towards me. This strengthens up the, the hamstrings and enables you to do a few more reps past that point. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on um, this particular training style. I'd be really interested to know. Um, once again, thanks for the support and uh, see you on the next one. Cheers.